Hello everybody, welcome. Have a look at this building. And the building behind is actually equally as interesting. We're here in a part of the Northeast that a lot of people would know. If you've been a bad lad, or a bad lass, or any of the binary refinery in between, you'll know that used to be Morpeth Police Station back in the day. Now what you don't realize is that this area that this car park is in and this fine tower, this used to be the courthouse. Now, there's been a prison here since 1511. And at the present moment, for those of you that know Morpeth, the main road into Morpeth is literally just over there. Over the back of those garages, there is a, a car park. It used to be a children's school. But all of that area, the entire, the entire area used to be the main prison for Northumberland. Now when the police used to, and if you, if you look at this area, it's all considered private, it's privately owned, I don't know what they're going to do with it. But if you have a look at how the buildings are set out, there's building blocks right the way across there. If you can imagine the courthouse as part of this huge prison area, so you didn't have to, if you sentenced somebody to go to jail, they literally had to walk across the courtyard and into the next part of the prison. Now, interestingly enough, this huge building here, and I think it looks spooky just in the nature of it, with strange turrets for no particular reason up at the top now the police when they worked in this building said that there were two or three places where certain police staff didn't want to go on their own so they were quite happy to arrest the biggest hoolies uh, known to man but when it came to walking into the darker areas of the police station they were always quite terrified i would love to say that if you look through certain windows, you're supposed to be able to see. And that's true. The main window that was haunted, but they've blocked them all up with wood, as you can see. And that's not it. But Murph Murphy's Law would dictate. It's actually the three that's beneath the two mini turrets. It's that one, that one, and that one. Those three. You are supposed to... And it was the figure that you would see isn't anything that's like police station E. Uh, what you used to see across there was a sweeping female form that went from one side across to the other, dressed in a long black dress with a white sort of pinny attached to it. So ignore this because realistically, back in the, in the 1500s, it wasn't even there. But this was, you see the clock tower? Now, if you have an apartment here, you actually go in through this way. And I'm so glad this is open. Because if you catch a glimpse of anything, make sure you screenshot it and make sure you share, share, share. The reason why this is so important. Now, if you have an apartment here, this is the way you come in. People live in each one of these and it takes them to the Morpeth Court Apartments. But it's here, just inside the door. Just here. You got this strong piece of metal holding the door shut. Massive old fashioned chain outside, smaller chains. This is the real door. This is the actual door. And I don't know how clearly you can see it from where you are, Tony, but 
it was at this spot that one of the most famous executions happened here a lot of years ago. There was a, a man called Charlton, and Richard Charlton committed a murder. And it was at a time in 1875 when public executions came to an end. And it's just great to see the original old door. It's amazing with chains and stuff. Um, you will see the other side of it too. Uh, I presume you didn't want to go in there for signal purposes. Yes, I'm guessing. Thick the walls. Yeah, it is very thick. Now, Richard Charlton, he murdered his wife Meg. Now, this is what makes this area, which is around and about in the in the private bit, but it makes it all the more interesting because. Um, let me tell you the story. The, the, the family had been in trouble with the police before. A lot of the police officers, officers of the court here in Morpeth, knew Charlton. They knew he was a bad sort. He'd battered a few people in local pubs in the town. He'd been arrested a few times. He'd been jailed for a week here and a fortnight there. And it seemed like in so many cases, when you start getting used to bad behavior, it accelerates and it moves from petty thievery up to serious crime. And that's exactly what happened with uh, Richard Charlton. Charlton and his wife Meg were falling out. Charlton had a fancy for a woman who worked at the local tavern where the Waterford is now, for those of you that know Morpeth. And what he did is killed somebody in a disgusting way. He went to his house now his house at the time is literally about 200 yards in that direction. It wasn't a particularly nice house. A hovel would possibly be a better way of describing it. Now, he found that his wife was cooking some food. And back then they had huge cooking pots, like a cauldron. And this was a sizable cauldron and the water was boiling, whether it was for soup or stew, or whether it was just boiling water up to, to steep some filthy clothes. Whatever the reason was, it was full of boiling water. And Charlton got a hold of her by the back of the neck and pushed her face into the boiling water, and her face began to cook, and she was screaming and screaming and lashing back with her hands. And even though his own hands were being boiled in the water, he kept pushing her head down until she drowned in boiling water. He was arrested, he was brought here, and you gotta remember, traditionally there would be a public execution in the main center square of the building where thousands of Morpethians would come in and they would witness the execution and then snip off fingers or snip off a penis or an ear. Got to take a souvenir home with you. However, 1875, that stopped altogether. Public executions stopped. So they had to kill Richard Charlton. And that's where they killed him. They opened the front gate, told everybody, pulled him out of the court, showed him to the crowd and said, we can no longer... We can no longer show you the execution. They opened the door and from a ceiling joist in a clip was a noose hanging and they hanged him just at the end of there, just inside the door. And just before they hanged him, they closed the door and people were listening and they go, one, two, three. They heard the gallows fall. They heard his neck stretch and they heard him screaming. And it's those screams that people say they hear in this neck of the woods. But the interesting thing is, a few people that have come to stay at people's apartments here, at the courthouse, have said that they have felt red hot flushes. Maybe the same kind of hot flush that Meg Charlton felt when she was being suffocated, drowned and scalded to death in that cauldron. But it's said that occasionally, at night time, people have come in and they've seen someone hanging on a rope at the end of this very area. So, amazing story. 
I love the fact that they talk about how women feel a hot flush or they feel that their, their face is, is boiling and burning. And the weird thing was that when Charlton was hanged, when they put his hands behind his back and tied them, both of his hands were covered with huge uh, blebs of skin from the, the boiling water that he'd put his hands in. So, people said they've seen stuff in the courthouse. It's up for sale again. It's been up for sale a lot. And a lot of people think that it might be just constantly being sold because people have to deal with the, the ghost side of things. But this was in 1511, this was the biggest prison in all of Northumberland. Massive. And it had a, a disgusting reputation for um, ill treatment. There's a rhyme. Oh, I'll never be able to remember it, but let me try. It said, oh, because the, the prison at the time was, what they used to call it was the tenders. Oh, have you, I've got to go to prison. I'm, I'm spending a month in the tenders. So what's tender about going to court and then spending time in a, a heinous, rotten prison? Well, the rhyme went like this. 10 days, so 10 days wasn't true, it's 10 days because your average life expectancy if you were sent to prison in here was 10 days. So they called it 10 days. 10 days till your deed. You didn't get near feed. You only get water and then it's the slaughter. That's the rhyme of Morpeth Jail, as it used to be. It's been a lot of other things since. It's apartments now. But even if you just look to your right-hand side there, Tony, you see that amazing proper, proper door. I'm not going to rattle it because it is where somebody lives, but just, I mean, the metal spikes so that if you're trying to break in, the metal's going to stop it. You may crack the wood, but the metal uh, inside of it will hold it tight. Around the front, you look across and you can see the statue of somebody quite famous in the park there. And there is the main door. Now, I was on the opposite side of that. Now, for whatever reason, while I was on the other side, I wasn't feeling, my alarm wasn't going off. So it may well be, in fact, I think the hanging was here. And the reason I think that, I think this was the main door. I know it's not on now, but the signs here where the door was, where the hinges used to be. So I think the hinges were here. So I think this was the main door they opened and the crowd would go, there he is, the swine, who killed his wife. And they put the noose over a hook. Well, isn't that the perfect place for it? So they open that, bring him out, stand him on the gallows, close the doors, and they say there's no such thing as a public execution anymore. The only difference between it being a public execution, they all saw him on the gallows, then they shut the door. Up he went. The weird thing is about this place, you got cars in all directions, and if you just stop for a moment, I'm going to stop on the opposite side of the road, if we can get across without dying, which is always beneficial. Now this is called Carlisle Park because the Earl of Carlisle opened it in the 1920s. A lot of people being paid tribute to on here, more Pethians. Now, this is... This one seat, and if you look for it, you can, you'll recognise it at once because of all the, the tributes on it. It didn't always have tributes. This road leading up, Tony, if you get with a green metal fence, that's the mortar path. That's the murder path. And it's this particular seat that has a, a grisly story attached to it. The murder path. A lot of people said, oh, Morpeth, why is it called Morpeth? It was called 
the, the moor path, the path across the moor. There's an ounce of truth in that. But the main reason why getting a lot of helicopter activity, I think they must have spotted, <laughs> must have spotted somebody trying to break into a derelict building or something. Anyway, the, uh, I'll tell you more about that later. Anyway, the, the Morte Peth. Imagine Morpeth is walled off. Imagine this is castle and a high wall to protect the castle and castle guards on the bridge to get across to Morpeth. Guards, who are you? Why are you coming here? What is your business? So, the Morte Peth. Imagine York City. Do you remember when we went, we went off to York and we told the story about how everybody used to dump their rubbish out of windows onto the street? Well, that's exactly what they did in Morpeth. They'd open their window and all of their ablutions would go straight. I, I do think they're actually looking for us. I don't know, but they're directly above our heads at the present moment. Is that you? Why? So I, I took it across the fence and I was like inside of it and I was trying to get up the telephone room but it's all the way to CCTV. Ah, right, they've seen you on the camera and they're, they're so watching you out. So you're trying to get in. I so, think that might be for me. So there's a helicopter. There's a helicopter of a helicopter. Oh dear. Yeah. <laughs> we were just looking for interesting nooks and crannies around the park. We've just told the amazing history of what's happening over here. And the, more, the murder path, if you can imagine like York Centre, you've got people chucking rubbish onto the streets and the streets absolutely, absolutely uh, full of excrement running into the River Wandsbeck, which is just here. So you've got a stinking little town. I'm, I'm not saying that to be nasty. It just would be very stinky. So what the people of the town used to do if they wanted to walk with their lady, they didn't have things like parks. This was castle grounds. Castle at the top of the hill. Courthouse opposite. This was relatively safe. And because it was safe here, they think, well, if I walk along the path, I'll be perfectly safe there too. So they would walk with their ladies. They'd promenade and they'd walk along the path. Now, the fact was, the only safe places here was probably within 50 feet of here. In town, there was a lot of people about, so you were fairly safe. And if you stayed within the walls, a protected city, a town rather, but they'd get a bit of fresh air and they'd start walking along the Morte path, the, the murder path, the death path if you prefer, and they'd start getting killed and they got killed with alarming numbers. Now, if you look up the history, they'll say it was called the Morte Peth because of the occasional, the occasional incident. The reality was a lot of people lost their lives on this path over the centuries. I mean, we're talking hundreds, because if you were a reaver, if you were a robber, if you were a vagabond of any kind, the thing that you did was you waited till the rich people went out for a walk and you louped on them. Now, to point that story and make it even more, Tony, it's this seat down here. This seat here. Can he sit here? Because, and I, I shall demonstrate. I shall, uh, it'll be easier to get in the back of the car when the, when the police actually come here. So see. For that reason, a helicopter would be up there. I just thought it got, it got there rather quickly. No other reason. Grab a seat. Now, this used to be what they called the love seat. The I know there's a lot of tributes on it, but this used to be called the love seat. Yeah. Now, a man called Turnbull came here, and he yeah. was the last one, and he just sat back, he was tired, yeah. and a criminal escaped from the prison, which is round the back, yeah. and he ran across, obviously this road wouldn't be a road of this sort, it would be a track. He ran across the road, jumped over the fence into castle grounds, remember this was castle grounds, yeah. and then he thought, I've got no money, how am I going to escape? So what he did was, unbeknown to Turnbull, unbe unbeknown to the person rather sitting there, yeah. Turnbull 
climbed onto the onto the fence and with a knife did this slit the throat and robbed the man sitting in the love seat so the Turnbull story is fairly well known and off they went this whole thing happens up and down. you've got to remember that if you are driving out of Morpeth especially if you're heading towards the A1 you follow the murder path and it covers about half a mile it goes all the way along so people would walk thinking we're safe as long as we stick to this and of course people would be hiding in the trees on both sides of the road I know there's a ghost at the window Tony you might want to Try and capture if you so, can. So is that why it was called La Morte, like La Death, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah, is Morte, like Death Path. Yeah. But this was, the, as I say, the biggest prison. It went right the way down to the river where all the apartments are at the far side. I'm in the ideal place, aren't I? When the helicopter goes. <laughs> Kenny was looking for interesting places in the park. Yeah. He nearly found an interesting cell <laughs> instead. Inquiries. Yeah, it's interesting, but um, we, we think we found out where the man was hanged. This guy called Charlton hanged there, and uh, various ghostly stories. But let's dive in. As I say, Carlisle Park, named after the Earl of Carlisle. I mean, I got across the fence, I got right next to it, but then there's another fence, and it's got CCTV. It's got on. CCTV so, CCTV yeah. There Must be. Yeah, yeah, I'm not sure where well, it is. I would imagine they will come and, and see well, what we're doing. Okay. What was I doing? I didn't trespass, I just walked over a fence that was broken, so it was accessible. Get your story straight. <laughs> it's on my camera, it's on my camera. Now, you, what you have to do is remember that this, through the trees, Kenny, can I swap? Because uh, yeah, yeah. I've got your big heavy one on. Right. I'd rather have me little. If you look through the trees, where the tallest tree is at the present moment, you can actually see behind the tree next to it on both sides, where Kenny's obviously not no, doing any. Like but you can see you can see the castle through it. Can you see that? You're not picking yeah, up on here. It's the of it, yeah. But it's there. Yeah. Now, we very nearly started at a place called St Mary the Virgin, a church which is about half a mile. On the, on the murder path on the way in, in fact. Right. Because that's where this woman, who is actually a, an awful lot bigger than, uh, than in real life. Because yeah. if she's not, I don't want to meet her. <laughs> this is Emily Davison. She's wearing the colours. And somebody's put a, a plant there of the colours of the suffragettes. No, that's a that's a real eyes. They put a they cut a real eyes out. <laughs> no, but I'm seeing the colour of them is a bit creepy, isn't it, look? Isn't it? How about that? She knew they would come with a funnel and pipe, that they would come mob-handed, restraining her body, but strengthening her convictions with misguided methods. Small brutal victories achieving the greater defeat, and she was content. That is Emily Davison. Now Emily, for those that don't know, major suffragette, probably the second best known suffragette. Everybody's heard of uh, Emily, Pankhurst. Emily Pankhurst. So this is um, Emily Davison. She's buried, as I say, in the cemetery of the church just up the road. Votes for women. Yep. Now, when she went to college, women were not allowed to take degrees. It was only men, right? But she studied up to degree standard anyway. And she then became a governess and a teacher and several other things. And her ghost is said to walk in this park, which is why having this here is all the more relevant because she's actually been seen here. This being one of her favorite places of all time. Now the story of how she died uh, you know, people only know that she threw herself in front of the king's horse, Anma, yeah. and ended up dying of her injuries. But do you know that a few years earlier, she leapt from a building onto a net 
and hurt her neck and hurt her back and uh, needed hospitalization. Do you know she was arrested so often she went on suicide watch and refused to eat? She was one of the first people that did one of those starvation things. You know where I refuse to eat because yeah, yeah. we haven't got the vote, it's not fair. So she's a leader, wasn't she? She she was a leader, but she was also in trouble with the police. An awful lot, this woman. And she said she didn't care as long as ultimately they got to the goal that uh, that they were after. Now, interesting, when she died, a coffin was put on a train in the Newcastle Central Station and a suffragette guard of honour on horses and carriages travelled all the way from Newcastle to St Mary the Virgin Church and three days later her ghost was seen walking up this path here. She's been seen three or four times on this path there sitting down and walking along and particularly the Three school children were once coming up and they were, they had a, 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 like a, what do you call it? Like when the teachers gives you a job and you've got to go and oh, give yeah. gives them a, give them a job. Yeah. And the job was to go to Carlisle Park and take photographs of interesting wildlife. Yeah. And it was during the spring, so they were trying to get butterflies and beetles and spiders and all of that. And when they took a photograph up here, actually up at this part, so we might as well go to where it is. They came up here and they, they were following what they said at the time they thought was a, either a peacock or a red admiral, two types of butterflies. And they were chasing them and the butterfly stopped at this centre piece here. It didn't have these big white daisies in, had a mixture of flowers at the time. And the, the butterflies tootling about. So they thought, I'll take a photograph of that. So they had the little camera click. When they took the photograph, this made, it was in the Daily Mirror, the, day, the sun, the star. And it was out at the time when the sport, remember the sport? Yeah. They, they did a big feature on it too. Because they took a photograph of this whole bit. And on top of one of these, probably, I don't know, it could be anywhere here, was a butterfly with its wings out. But the interesting thing was here, and it, there wasn't a seat at the time, it was the wall. But on that wall, sitting directly on the other side of that photograph, was a woman dressed in an old fashioned Victorian hat high neck, long dress, and she was actually sitting like this. And it looked like all of the photographs, they actually put a photograph in the newspaper at the time saying, is this the ghost of the suffragette who, and the photograph was taken here. And the thing that, that makes it all the juicy area, Obviously, there's a building over there with the ghost of dead budgies because there's always been budgies in that, that little thing over there. So you've got the courthouse where people were hanged by the neck and in the courtyard behind them even more commonly. Then you've got the area uh, across here where Turnbull cut the man's throat on the murder path. Then you've got the ghost of Emily Davison walking along there, along there and sitting here. In all within 200 yards? Brilliant. And do you know, I've just been looking at that there, people should come up here on Sunday. It's 110 years exactly to the day on Sunday, 4th of June, when she got killed. How about it's that? Sunday. What was the derby? So presumably it's the derby this week, is it? I don't know. I've just seen the date on there, 4th of June. And I'm thinking that's exactly 110 years ago. Newcastle. Newcastle were loyal to the king. That's why we're Geordies. Because... The soldiers there fought for King George when the rest of Northumberland hated him. They're Georgies. So therefore, people like myself wear Geordies on the back of it. I'm proud to say so. Tribal. We have, I've got great love for anybody that belongs to any of the tribes of the North. The Smoggies, the Mackhams, 
Northumbrians, Pitmatics. We've got, there's probably about 700 different tribes. Love them all. But, Morpeth and much of Northumberland actually liked the Scots. And Morpeth gave haven to Scots, hid Scottish prisoners, and a lot of other things aside. Now, here, a family called de Merle, from the French, because the French took us over, if you remember, we were belonging to the French. De Merle owned all of this land, and he fell out with King John of England. So King John sent soldiers here to wipe them out. What he did was, King John, he murdered every single person in the fort, wiped them out, wiped out Berwick, set it on fire, wiped out Annick, set it on fire, wiped out Morpeth, burnt it to the ground, and killed every man, woman, and child in there. The only ones that escaped were helped by the Scots, who came down eventually to chase out King John's men, and chased them, harried them, all the way to Bowes Castle, which was a, like a royal enclave. But Morpeth was wiped out. And everybody in that castle that was there and the other part of the castle, the gatehouse where we're heading to soon, wiped out, killed. Now, just prior to that, there'd been a siege up here where 500 lowland Scots defended the castle. They put Scottish soldiers in there to keep the royalists at bay. 2,700 royalists, just imagine that number for a second, 2,700 royalists up on that hill trying to get in, 500 Scots kept them out for 20 days until eventually they got sick and beggared off. Now, just amazing, and it's there. But is, where's the plaque? Where's the little bit of ground that they've unearthed so that people can have a look at this amazing thing? Not a thing. Now, there is said to be at the gatehouse where we're going next, a, another ghostly figure, and it's said to be of a blood-soaked soldier, and his spirit's been seen dozens of times, every year, not just once, not just a one-off or a two-off, regularly seen. So we're gonna go up there now, and, whoops, and see what... I just think it was an easy win, even if they just had a big plaque saying, yeah. here's the story. Now, if you get up to the top and you can, apparently you can see all of Morpeth. Right. And you've got to remember, before these trees were built, you'd be able to see for miles in all directions. Yeah. Well, trees were built, grown, not built. Anyway, let's get up and let's see if we can see this ghost, this trooper, blood-soaked spirit. But isn't it, this is just a fun park where people come during the day and they've got no idea no. that the ghost sat there on the wall. That's crazy. Mate, it is, it's, sort of a, it's not like a normal park or a feeling where you get, is it? Like a nice normal park. It's not. There's it's a, there's a bit of a... Bit uh, of an edge to it. Yeah, yeah. And also, if you do come to this park and you're pushing anybody in wheels of steel, oh. bring friends because Jeez. this is... This is steep as hell, this, it's, just be aware of it. And if you're not easy, not like firm on your feet, stay on the lower edges of this park. But you're quite right. The feeling changes as soon as you get into the trees. Uh, it's the kind of place that everybody thinks they know about, but they don't. No. No. It's like a coconut, isn't it? <laughs> it is 
<laughs> at some point, I think, maybe the land came up to here and that was the root and the root's being peeled back. That's what I think it is. But you never know, because it just looks like a... It looks an a, unusual kind of colour and everything, the tree. Yeah. And an unusual tree anyway, doesn't it? Look. Now, before this was a park, you've got to remember, this is an area where the troops would be working and using, and a lot of this would just be wild countryside. But the castle would be, all the trees would have been cut back so they could see. And look at that. I mean, we're not on top of a castle. We're not even on top of a hill, if you think about it. But if you stand over here, you can see the church on the end of the bridge. You can see if anybody's trying to get across the bridge. Pretty much everything from here. Is that a police car, Kenny? Don't. Don't. I'm still expecting them to come. What a great start. Helicopter in the air, like a bug. Well, you can't say we don't look suspicious. Well, this is true. Oh, man. I wonder what they did then. They must have just radioed in and said, nah. I'm not even sure this is the right way. They must have radioed that in and just said, nah. I'm, I'm not sure this is the right way. I think this takes you down to the, the murder path, because the road's just there. I think this is not the way, I think it must be this way. Does it lead to the castle? Does it lead to the castle? I'm not sure, I think it probably does because... Okay, well let's do it. When I went in there, it, it goes back into the park. Right, no, I'm, I, I'm aware of that, but I just thought it was a, a harder way to get, but let's just do it. I know that there's two ways in that way. Right, may well be that. So, as we told you about the murder path, and if you look at how big the prison used to be, it went to the back of that other building. This was a massive, for its time, right the way up. And I know there's a, they've built houses up on the other side. Because it was a centerpiece, really. If you think about it, there'd be major towns back then. Anik. Berwick, that's probably it, you know, and that's the ones that, uh, absolutely, and they were the ones burnt to a crisp by yeah. King John. Yeah. They also suffered it at a thing um, back in the, the 10 hundreds when the French took over. It's funny how the same towns, even if you support the people that are becoming new kings, you can still end up in major trouble. There was a, a thing I've mentioned on a few of these called the harrying of the north. Right. It meant that around the time William the Conqueror had just conquered the south and didn't want any trouble with the north so he sent his men to to go up to the north and harry them and otherwise say look you belong to me now we've conquered your country don't fight and if you do fight this is what will happen yeah. to you yeah. and he he wiped out Berwick Anik Morbeth. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling, oh, stairs. Kenny Howe. Right, okay. Yeah, I think it's the right way to. Yeah, when you were on the run. You know that program on the With a helicopter in the sky and a beaver everything back. Now you see, back in the day, imagine all of this woodland. Anybody could hide in the woods and you could see along the murder path yeah. to see whether there's anybody worth robbing. And right the way around, the park on the other side, which has very few trees, it's mainly like a dog walking area, it's called Farquhar and Dusha Park. <laughs> which... Uh, you wouldn't want to be called a Farquhar. <laughs> to be honest, I wouldn't even want to be a doucher, to be honest, but <laughs> that's what it's called. We've got to look for a way in because the castle apparently. That'll take you back down to the, the murder path. Yeah. That's the plan. Here, 
They should be, I just think they, they should be more history it's told about. It, yeah. They're missing a trick, I think, the past. Visit which they do. Yeah. Stay in here, you know. What was that? Don't know. Next to them derelict houses and that, there's like a plaque on one of them with a Christ on there and stuff like that. You know, it's all broken and that. Yeah. No, here's the castle. Look where. Gate house. It's the only part that stands anymore. And again, just tremendous history in all directions. People live here, so we're going to have to be a bit um, considerate. Do you want to expect to see that when you just walk around a corner? How about that, so? Absolutely brilliant. Now the main place where the main siding is, yeah, there's little bits of castle wall over here. We'll have a look at this first. You've got to remember the castle went right there. You know, we're not talking like a small thing. And if you imagine Hoare Hill, which is over there, several, 500 yards probably. I'd get the balls out and put them in here. Let's, in, oh, there's people in there. Next time, next time, don't want really to disturb. It's still light and people come out. There's a, there's a story attached to that, I'll tell you later. But when we were talking about the, you know, the blood soaked, soldier that people saw with um and it was a soldier wearing this dog's gonna come and attack. wearing a leather kind of jacket yeah carrying a, a small pike that's not a fish yeah. and uh he's often seen there yeah. as if he's standing guard on the top of there now I don't know what that was previously. It looks, you see that lump in there? Yeah, yeah. Looks like there was a parapet. Yeah, yeah. So maybe he was guarding the the centerpiece here. But that's where he's seen. Now this is the gatehouse. If you fancy a bit of history, yeah. King Henry VIII's sister, Margaret Tudor, who made a canny bag of crisps, <laughs> Margaret Tudor stayed here for four months in the gatehouse. It was considered because Morbeth being loyal to the Scots, Margaret used to be married to King James IV of Scotland. She was the king's wife. So after he was knocked off the throne, she came back here and was protected before they could take her south to be assimilated back into the, the crown of England. Absolutely amazing. Isn't it? Just amazing that, and now her ghost is sent to walk here too. She's, she shows herself at windows, she's watching out, waiting for a retinue. And the weird thing was, apparently at the time, Margaret watched at the front windows. Now I'm not sure whether this is the front or the back. I think it's the back actually. Um, but she waited at the windows, waiting for a retinue of Scots to take her home to Scotland because she loved Scotland so much. And yet, people live there, Kenny, so I wouldn't. Um, <laughs> let's, let's just knock on the door. Um, oh, the, oh, no. And uh, so she was hoping that the, the soldiers that would come and see her would be Scottish. And the reality was, 
King Henry VIII sent a whole batch of English soldiers to come and take her safely back because it was thought if she was part of what Henry VIII was doing, the Scots would be less likely to attack. Right. Yeah. But you can see, it, oh. it's a building to, to keep people out. Yeah. And people coming in would come in up a track like this. So that, therefore, if you wanted to stop people, yeah. you could do it easily, yeah. couldn't you? Pushing carts yeah. off, the, off the hill, yeah. Yeah. down the bottom, and a lot of these trees wouldn't have been there at the time. Yeah. See again? Yeah. Where? Really? God, already. We want to go around the back and see what. Yeah, the, we, yeah, we can. We can come back uh, that way. Right now, we've got two years worth of shows that you're going to have for something like three pound odd a week, a month. Sorry, three pound odd a month. Uh, how do they do it, Tony? How do they join us so they get all of that stuff immediately? Then you can watch what you like. If you're on Facebook, there's a link in the video description. Just become a subscriber, and everything's available on YouTube. Join the channel. And same, everything's available for the members. And uh, we'd love you to do that. We have a blah on a Tuesday where we update what's happened the week before. We did a, a blah and a half, not quite a, two, a double blah, but a blah and a half yeah. last night. And uh, the more questions you got, the longer we run for. That's, that's how it works. So uh, keep on, if you spot anything, and again, even there could be something right there. You've just got to... You've got to check Two out these places. Growth, Two years with amazing. You can watch them all. Absolutely, and find out a ton of stuff about places you never knew. Let's go and see if we can find.